Hey, I'm Cameron Kenzie at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk about struts form handling. I'm going to be creating a little form here that takes the first name, last name, email address, and age, creates a person object, calls on a struts action. The action will initialize all these properties in that person Java bean and then print out, hey, you know, we got all this information. So that's going to show you how to do some form handling in this particular tutorial. Now, I will tell you that this tutorial actually follows the processing forms tutorial over on struts at apache.org. So if you're watching this tutorial and you actually want to see some of the, the text and, and kind of read what I'm doing and step through it through text as well, you can head over there and find that tutorial. So I've got just a basic struts application started here. I wouldn't even call it a struts application. I've just set up the POM file with all of the required dependencies and I put in the web.xml file that's got the basic struts prepare and execute filter in there. And now I'm gonna actually start creating a bit of a struts application. So the goal here is to actually create a little program that can simulate the registration of a user, of a person. So I'm gonna create a new package called com.mcnz.struts, and I'm gonna create a class called, I'm gonna create a class called person, This is gonna represent the person class, and a person is gonna be able to register. So we're gonna have an HTML form that allows a user to tell us what their first name is, We'll also allow that user to tell us what their last name is, their email address is, and their name. I'm gonna update these, so that should be the last name, and then that should be email, and then this will be their age. And we're even gonna do some razzle-dazzle there and make that of type in. Now, of course, whenever you've got these in a pojo, you always wanna add your getters and setters to that. And of course, uh, it never hurts to actually have a two-string method as well. So I'm going to go source, generate a two-string method, and add all of those fields in there. Now, if I just do system out dot print person, you'll get to see their first name and last name. That just that just makes a little bit of sense there. Anyways, that's just a nice little person pojo that I can use to help register a user. Now, really the interesting part here is this registration form. I wanna create a, a little registration form. I'm gonna call it register. I'm gonna create the file in which the form is contained, register.jsp. That's my Java server page. And like all Java server pages, you wanna Start it off with a reference to the struts tag library and then also put in a page directive there as well. And by, by doing so, you're going to make sure that this page is fully supported in terms of Java and Java web development and web runtime. So there's your tag lib that imports the struts tags, make those available to the page. And then, yeah, we've got the little page directive there that just lets Java know that it's going to generate some HTML. So what I want to do in here is just create a, a simple little form. And I'll start off by just putting in my basic structure for the page. I'm not going to do the head preamble, but I will do a little heading here that says, hey, why don't you register? And then inside here, I'm gonna have a struts form. And so the struts form, again, uses that prefix s. So you say s colon form, the action's gonna be register. Now that's gonna be a register action. I haven't actually created that, but I will in just a moment. And I wanna have a, a nice kind of, I guess table that asks the person to put in their first name, their last name, their all of those other fields. And of course, uh, the first field will be the person's name, the second one will be their last name, the third one will be their email address, and then the last thing will be their age. Notice that these properties all map to the person class, and it is called person bean here. And I'll actually create a field called person bean in the register action class in just a moment. You'll see how that maps forth. And these labels, that's just the text that's gonna be next to these entry entry fields on the form. So we'll say what's your first name, what's your last name, what's your email name, no, we'll just ask you your email, and then your age, I guess, something like that. Maybe capitalize email, maybe not the worst thing in the world to do. 
And so that creates the basic registration form. Now, I wonder if it would allow me to run that. I have a feeling that it actually might not. So the first thing, so before I try and run that, what I'm actually gonna do is uh, I'm actually gonna create the action class. Because watch, if I try and run this, it may actually bark and say I can't find the register action. So I'll give this a try, run as, run on server. I really just wanna see what the forms would look like, but no, oh, okay, it didn't do that. So. There you go, it's actually working even better than I thought. So that's what the form looks like. Oh, you know what we're missing? We're missing a submit button. Gotta have a submit button, otherwise, uh, well, I guess somebody could click the carriage return, but there we go, a submit button, and that should look even better when I take a look at it running on Tomcat. There you go, the submit button. Okay, but this does go to that action class called register, which means I now need to create a new Java class, and I'll call it the register action and this action class is actually going to extend action support Let's see if we can browse for that and find that yeah there's the open symphony x works 2 action support put that in there i get a little complaint against a serialization id just add a default one if you really want to get rid of that little error it's just a warning, so it's not going to stop it from compiling, but, you know, it does look good. Uh, I want to actually declare an instance of that person class, so public, or maybe make it private. And I'll call it person bean here. I guess I could have called it person, but you see, person bean, this is the register action. This is what's getting called from the register GS, JSP. There's action register GSP. And then you see person bean dot first name. That's what person bean maps to it. Maps to that field inside of this action class. And as I said, like always, we will generate the appropriate getter and setter for the person bean. And of course, we also want an execute method. Could throw an exception, so you want to add that in here. In this case, we're not gonna be doing a lot of work, so we wanna return success. Now, normally, what you would do is you would say return success in brackets, but this class, because it extends action support, has access to a bunch of constants like login, success, failure. There's five different constants that you could actually use in here. Yeah, input log, login, none, success, um, that or common strings that you would use in a, a struts application. Now we're not gonna do anything here other than forward to the thank you JSP, which we'll create in a minute, but you could do like system.out.println and say the age is plus person bean dot get age. And of course this will print out the person's age. And the reason we'll do that is because before this execute method runs, the struts framework is gonna take this person object named person bean and bind all of the fields here that are typed in to that particular pro to, to that bean's properties, and then they become available. You can just use your getters to access them. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, this register action, when this runs, I want this to call a JSP called thank you.jsp. Now I haven't quite developed that JSP yet, but I've got to mention that on my action class. And so I'm gonna add an action annotation right above the class, and then I'm gonna inform the class what happens if the result is the keyword success. I get a little error here. I gotta organize my import source, organize imports. It's that convention class that we want. Click Control S, everything, all the compile errors go away. And I think this looks good. This is the register action. Okay, that maps up here. The action is register. And when there's a success, we will call on the thank you JSP. And I guess that's a, a file that we will create right now, right next to that register JSP. I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call it thank you JSP. And what am I gonna do here in this thank you JSP? Well, I guess I'll just, I'm just gonna print out information about the user. Now it is a JSP. So once again, you want all of these things that you put here in your register JSP in here as well, including the end tags for HTML and body. So you gotta have the tag lib directive, the page directive, that always makes sense. We can even say,
thanks for registering. And then finally, I don't know, I guess we could put uh, a little bit um, of data here. So we could say, your information submitted was, and then do a little s colon property, and then value equals person bean. Now, just by saying person bean, that's actually going to be the full two string. I'll put a little break there. That'll call the two string method. So that will call this method here because we're not calling any property in particular. And then all of that will get printed out onto the page. So we don't have to go property by property. Uh, we could if we wanted to, right? Um, but uh, here we're actually just going to print out the whole object. Okay, so I'll click Control S there, save that, make sure all of my files are saved. I'm going to close that and close that up. Maybe do a publish on the server, never a bad idea after you've uh, um, done all this. Maybe even do a restart. Only takes a second if you're using Tomcat. And then with that done, I am going to right click on my register JSP, say run as, run on server. I get my beautiful form here. By the way, you can always look at the source code there and you can see, yes, he's created all these tables for the form, but you can see, you know, person bean dot first name is the name of the property. You can see the action up here, register dot action. So the method is post in this case, which is interesting. But with that in there, I can type in Cameron McKenzie, me at mcnz.com. My age is 29. Click submit. It goes to the server. Notice it that says down here, the age is 29. That comes from the register action right here. Okay, so you see it actually calling that execute method. And then we can also see here the information submitted was that you're a person and these are all of your details. Now, you may not like that formatting. You might not want to include that in your public facing website, but that does come from the fact that we called the basic object, the person instance, and that gives us the two string method, which is that implementation right there. And there you go. That's how easy it is to do form handling in struts with that person class tutorial that I told you all about over on the struts website. I'm actually going to go forward and do the form validation one next. So if you're interested in learning more, stay tuned. And otherwise, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can always follow me on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ. I'm also the editor at theserverside.com. So head over there for lots of great tutorials on struts, JSF, Hibernate, Spring, you name it, and subscribe on YouTube.